introduce our guest expert. Co-founder and director of Meritract, Madan is an engineer from National Institute of Engineering, University of Mysore, and an MBA from SPGN Institute of Management and Research. An active speaker at many forums, especially on topics pertaining to assessments, talent pools, and employability enhancement. He is the author of several articles on HR and employability, which have been published in leading publications in India. He is also a well-recognized expert in the field of assessments and talent pools. Before I hand over the floor to Madan, a quick note to all our attendees. You will all be on mute. You may ask questions by typing in the panel provided. Our expert will answer the questions after his presentation. Over to you, Madan. Thanks, Neha. Uh, am I audible? I guess so. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Madan Padaki. Uh, I'm delighted to be here on this webinar. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, Housekeeping announcements in that sense before I start off. One, feeling a little bit under the weather, so if you hear my voice going up and down, it is it is not the enthusiasm for this uh, webinar, but more the antibiotics that are working. Uh, two, I'm also working out of home, so uh, if at all I drop off, it is the power that's gone off, and I'll be back again uh, within a minute or so once the UPS kicks in. Uh, great. So. Uh, in the course of the next 20-25 minutes, uh, I want to share uh, some thoughts on how to make the jump and uh, and also share some of our experiences uh, in Meritrack over the last 12 years, especially the first couple of years when we struggled really, really hard to establish a business. Uh, and then there are some very interesting, fascinating uh, insights lessons that we learned along the way that I want to share with uh, all of you today. Uh, just go on. So, so essentially, uh, I want to talk about uh, a few words, uh, and I've tried to uh, uh, put some meaning behind the word. The first one that I heard was a very interesting story about most 10 years ago, and it's it's left a very, very deep impact uh, on the way I think. Uh, essentially, uh, you know, uh, this is about um, what really differentiates a successful entrepreneur and a not so successful one, right? And and the and the point is, uh, what is that one exclusive trait that differentiates? So so somebody asked us uh, in an audience. We were all a part of an audience, so each of us put out answers like you know. It is hard work, perseverance, passion, uh, you know, determination, uh, focus, so on and so forth. But each time we were rebuked saying that, you know what, that's not an exclusive trait. For every passionate entrepreneur who's successful, you'll find 10 passionate entrepreneurs who have not made the cut, who will not be successful, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Till one of us stumbled onto this word and said, luck. And it turned out to be that, it was saying that, you know, unsuccessful entrepreneurs are lucky, unsuccessful entrepreneurs are not so lucky. Well, of course, uh, as entrepreneurs, we never believe in Kesara, Sara, whatever will be, will be, so it is hard to digest, but then came out the, the definition of luck, which is, uh, uh, which is very wonderful. And, and the analogy that, uh, that I'll use here is, uh, is football. You know, we've all, most of us have watched the Euro Cup, uh, which just concluded, of course, Rooney didn't play the way that uh, you should have, but Rooney for, in, in the press has been described many times as a lucky footballer. Uh, why lucky? Because apparently wherever he is, uh, the ball magically appears towards, uh, at him and, and he strikes a goal, right? And therefore he's lucky. But when you start dissecting the word uh, lucky, uh, you start to understand a luck, you start to understand uh, what constitutes a lucky footballer and therefore what constitutes uh, a lucky entrepreneur. Uh, the, the, for the first L, uh, the first letter L stands for location. Uh, as in football, you need to pick the field, you need to pick the ground, and you need to position yourself in a particular position uh, and, 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 and anticipate the ball. 
Uh, so is in the case of, of, of becoming an entrepreneur that you need to pick your field of play, for example. In Meritrack, we picked our field of play as the talent landscape. When we started out 12 years ago, uh, a large part of the Meritrack dream was triggered by one report that we read, uh, which was by Mascom McKinsey in 2000. But in, in 2000, the IT and the BP industry was a fledgling, I think not more than 100,000 people. And there was a report which said that uh, this industry will grow to about 1.1 million people in the next 10 years. And, uh, and, and that fascinated us, saying that, you know what, if a million people are going to get added to an industry in the next 10 years, there's going to be a huge amount of opportunities for entrepreneurs. Uh, one is, of course, to do the gold digging yourself. So one obvious choice would have been, let's go set up an IT BPO company ourselves. But the other was that apparently during the gold rush, the people who made money were people who actually uh, were not the ones who were digging for gold uh, uh, late on, but were the guys who were actually making the shovels and the spades for the gold diggers. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so our approach, our thought was that let's not get into the IT BPO. Uh, industry ourselves, but let's create the shovels and the spades uh, for the guys who are participating in the gold rush. And and we said if talent is going to be the key thing, then that's what we should look at, right? Uh, so that's that's the location. That's our field of play that we that we picked up. And and it's very critical for entrepreneurs to uh, identify the field of play because there are tons and tons of opportunities, and to pick the right field of play is very critical. Uh, U stands for understanding. Uh, you know, for example, you could be standing in front of the of the, of the goal post, but you could be facing in a completely different direction and anticipating the ball to come from somewhere else. Well, the ball passes behind you, and you don't know that the ball is passed. Uh, so, so understanding the field, understanding uh, uh, the lay of the land, is a very critical aspect. And another example from a very tragic story was that. You know, the obvious choice was let's get into placements uh, or let's get into training. But from our understanding, one insight that we got by attending a few recruitment events uh, and talking to a few friends in the in the HR world, uh, I used to work in Infosys and Wipro earlier, so reached out to some former colleagues. Uh, the the insight that we got was that you know, if a million people are in the industry, and we heard the conversion rate was about 10%. So it was about uh, uh, for every 100 people who applied, 10 people or so got into the company. When you did the math on a million people, uh, the numbers were staggering. You said, hey, if a million people had to get hired and the conversion rate is going to be 10-15%, uh, somebody has to process 10 to or 8 to 10 million people in the next 10 years. And that's a humongous number. Right? And when we dug in a little further, we said, what does processing mean? Processing means that you need to design tests, you need to conduct these tests, you need to coordinate, organize interviews, schedule with candidates, schedule with panels, and this has to happen every day in multiple cities across the country, and you are looking at a massive problem. And, and obviously for us, uh, for us entrepreneurs, you know, every, every uh, uh, challenges and opportunity in disguise. Uh, so that's that's our understanding of the play, right? So we said we will focus on talent assessments because that's where we think we can score our goal and become successful. Uh, uh, and and that's 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 the uh, uh, that's the angle that we took. Uh, the third uh, that's C stands for contacts and connections, right? Uh, as in football. You might be standing in front, you might have chosen your field of play, you might be standing facing the goalpost, but if nobody passes the ball on to you, you can't score a ball. So the third thing, I mean, so in this context, we soon realized that, you know, neither Mudli or Mohan, my two of the co-founders and I, had nothing to do whatsoever with uh, HR, recruitment, training, assessments, nothing at all. And we realized that if we don't develop those contacts and those connections, uh, we'll never be able to be successful. Uh, so, so a few things that we started doing was to make sure we started building a very robust advisory board. Uh, we started meeting people by the dozens. We started understanding what this industry is all about. 
and and within a span of one and a half years, we had acquired enough of connections, enough of people who were uh, able to uh, pass the ball to us and and, and convert uh, you know those conversations into revenues, into orders. And I think that's a very critical aspect in my interactions with a lot of entrepreneurs. I'm pretty active with Thai. Um, I find that many times uh, the approach will be, you know what, I'm just sitting in my in my garage or my home or whatever. I'm hacking away. I'm building a fantastic product. But one of the first questions that I ask is, how many people have you met over the last three months? What are the types of people have you met? What kind of conversations have you had? Can you show me an analysis of what the thoughts are? And more often than not, uh, you know, I would get blank stares saying that, you know what, I don't have time for all that. I'm building building a fantastic product. And and I, I say, you know, you missed the point. You can't build a fantastic product if you can't have the connections and the contacts who will give you information and insights into what to build. Right? Uh, so so that's the C. And the last obviously uh, is you could be in the right field, facing the goalpost with the right connections, people pass you the ball, and you can't kick the ball into the goal. So, uh, so the K actually stands for knowledge. We're saying that when everything is in favor and all 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 are positioned well, how can you then go in and score the goal? So, which means how do you equip yourself? Uh, what are the things that you need to do as an individual to either for quality for for making sure that your delivery is 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 uh, is awesome, uh, for making sure that uh, you're able to uh, deliver on the promises made, and therefore having a great product in that sense really helps at the knowledge uh, side of things, right? So that's the uh, you know I love this analogy because it kind of looks at aspects at a, at, a, at a high level that will make an entrepreneur uh, uh, successful. And I think luck is what all of us should have. In my opinion, there should be no unlucky entrepreneur. Every entrepreneur should be lucky. Uh, so with that context, I want to move on to the next one about, uh, you know, I was speaking to the folks at ADN, and looking around what kind of, uh, what is the topic that you want to go on to address on. And they said, you know, the thing about jumping. But when do you think is the right time to come? And uh, you know, with three of three co-founders, uh, I have seen three of us struggle to make that decision, uh, and struggle with the decision once we made it as well. So I said, hey, that's a very appropriate topic. So again, um, I wanted to uh, expand on the jump theme itself. And before I got into the jump, every jump situation starts off with an idea. So I meet a lot of entrepreneurs uh, who came and say, I have a fantastic idea and uh, and uh, and I want to get started. Now, there are four things that come to my mind when I hear about an idea or when I hear about people talking about an idea. Uh, and, and I want to share those four things. And, you know, started off with luck, L-U-C-K. I, uh, I tried to fit into the theme of, uh, you know, IDEA or, or GAUMP in the course of my presentation, that's what you'll see. The first thing that comes to my mind when somebody talks about an idea is that any idea starts off with identifying a, a customer pain point and working hard to validate it, right? Example, again, uh, one of the first things that we did when we had this idea about starting an assessments company was to approach the head of HR or the general manager HR of one of India's largest IT company then, which continues to be Wipro. And we met with Pratik, who's now on the executive director of HR of Wipro, uh, then and asked, asked Pratik, saying that, you know what, this is what we're trying to do. Two things. One, have you heard of anybody doing a similar thing? Do you think this idea will be valuable to you? His response kind of was very interesting. He said, I've never heard of this idea before, which was good news, which meant that there was nobody else in the market either doing or offering something similar, uh, and which mean, meant that we were probably, if we, if we, if we get to the market quickly, we will be the first guys to do it. Uh, but it was also, the second part was very interesting, was saying that unless and until I'm comfortable with the entity that is doing it, because testing and assessments is so core to what uh, we do as an organization that unless and until uh, we are comfortable 
uh, with the entrepreneurs or with the company that is doing this, we won't outsource it to, to anybody, right? Which meant that A, uh, and, and of course the third point he made was, yes, I, I do agree that there's a pain point. You're saying that, you know, the pros question papers are not uh, changed very often, which is true in several other companies that we spoke about that uh, content is just looked up as putting some bunch of 10 guys together and asking them to write two questions each and you have a 20, 25 question answer, question paper out, so on and so forth. So we did about seven or eight such meetings by trying to reach out to a network of friends when we identified the exact pain point, validated it, and also put some thoughts around what will it take for us to be successful if we need to start out this business. Uh, again, uh, uh, in, in various interactions with, with entrepreneurs in various forums that I uh, interact and talk to, I find validation, a, a clear identification of a customer need and validating that customer need to be a large gap. At the gut, at the gut level, every, everyone who has an idea says, I know this is what is required, but if I'm an investor, if I am uh, if I'm an advisor, I would want to see more than the gut feel. I want to see, I want to see some indications of what that whether your gut feel is right or wrong. Um, the second uh, point here is differentiate. Right? Uh, a lot of times, the, the entrepreneurs would not have done a, a good enough scan, a market scan, or competition scan as well as who else is offering something similar and why will a customer buy from you. And I believe that differentiation is, is extremely important uh, if you want to succeed in the marketplace. So uh, what is your offerings going to be and how is it going to be different uh, and why will it make a customer better off by choosing you than someone else is a, is a, is a question that needs to be answered very, very effectively. Uh, e is engraved. What I mean by engraved is put it down on paper. Uh, uh, however, uh, you know, uh, uh, cliche it might sound, uh, a business plan has to be put. People say, you know what, even we, we went around for the first uh, week saying that, uh, oh, I have it all here, but the, out, the, the overwhelming uh, advice that we got was, please write down a three-page executive summary. Then and start getting out your ideas because the moment you start putting pen to paper, a lot of the thoughts starts getting crystallized, and and it's imperative that uh, your idea is embellished uh, well onto uh, 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 onto a, onto a formal document itself. And I I would urge any one of you who have an idea to spend a few hours putting that down because the amount of clarity that you would get would be phenomenal. And the last is. Uh, attach and align. In a way, I was trying to get a synonym for the word focus, uh, and this is the best I could do. Uh, in the early stages of your plan, when you're talking about your idea to a lot of people, you'll find three kind of responses. Uh, one, people will say, fantastic idea, great, uh, I think it'll do well, which is a very small percentage. Second is people who are ambivalent to say, mm -mm, not sure whether it'll work, and third will say, let me tell you a better way of making this work. I think the core thing for for entrepreneurs, for us as an entrepreneur, is to be focused and committed and, and believe in the idea that we have because it's very easy to be swayed in the initial days. When we started around talking to a bunch of guys about assessments, 99% of the people that we spoke to said, what a ridiculous idea. Yeah, how can you ever survive just by doing testing? Uh, why can't you do training? Why can't you do placements? Why can't you embed assessments into training placements, so on and so forth? Uh, at at one point of time, uh, we were sounding so stubborn that the moment people started saying training placements, we started saying, "Okay, thank you very much. We heard that spin before. We're not going to do that." Uh, because heart of heart, we believe that there was an opportunity, and we've seen that opportunity play out uh, uh, in the last 10, 15 years. So uh, it is. Uh, the, the point that I want to reiterate here is, if you if you've identified, validated the idea, if you're very clear about the differentiation that you can uh, bring, 
and 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 how you're going to win the customer. If you articulate it well enough, uh, then the belief automatically comes. Uh, many times I see belief not coming because many stages of the prior process. Um, taking the plunge is to have an idea that has gone through all of these four stages. Uh, trying to set off uh, uh, on one's own before articulating this idea, or it could be a bunch of ideas. Um, I, I, I bet entrepreneurs will say, hey, there are three things I'm working on, right? Uh, and, and all three look exciting, and I'm going to decide over the next few months which one I'm going to run with. Uh, it's still a workable proposition as long as you don't go around saying, I'm going to do all three which are very different ideas, and then comes back to the basic question of where's the focus, where's the commitment um, uh, to a particular line of thought. Uh, once you are armed with an idea is when you think of jumping. Now, there are multiple answers to this. A um, lot of lot of times I've been asked, so when do you think is the right time to jump? And I'll give you, I'll share a small uh, anecdote uh, of, of, of the jump that I did. It was funny. I think in those days it was very clear that you, you get an idea, you write a business plan, you go shop around, to show this business plan to five or ten VCs, somebody will write you a million dollar check and you quit your jobs and that was the paradigm that we were working on. Uh, so armed with a three page executive summary we went and met uh, many uh, VCs and for several reasons we were all turned out because we are not a dot com business. But one conversation really jolted us. We met, uh, we met this senior uh, VC uh, who had a background in HR so we thought, hey, we've got a meeting, it's a cakewalk, we'll get our money and then we'll be all starting this off. Within the first five minutes of the pitch, he asked us, you know, uh, how many of you are in full time? We looked at each other, looked at him and said, what a dumb question. You know, you give us the money, we'll quit. And so we said, no, we're still contemplating, you know, once we raise the money, we'll, we'll, we'll jump. And that was the end of the meeting. He said, you know, I don't want to waste any more of my time. Uh, get out of my room, uh, talk to me only once, you have quit your jobs and found your first customer. Uh, you know, he said, you're not entrepreneurs, you're con artists, you're trying to con me of my money when you're not ready to uh, dump your paltry paying jobs. Uh, if, you, if you have an idea that you believe in, that's the least I expect. We came out pretty agitated and, uh, and, and after a while, calm prevailed and we realized what this guy was saying was absolutely right that if we don't quit, we'll never be able to, uh, you know, pursue this idea and therefore it's, it's, uh, it's now or never. And uh, that evening was when I made the call saying that I'm going to quit the next day morning. So, so even though we, did, we had an idea, we didn't have any customers, uh, we, didn't, uh, we didn't obviously have any investors. For me, I think I was convinced about the idea enough when I said that, just do it, right? If you have an idea, which you believe is powerful, you just got to do it. There's no, there's no time frame for that. In fact, funnily enough, the next day I went to the managing director of uh, BFL, uh, where I used to work, before Meritrack, and I actually tried to do another deal with him, where I said that, you know, um, give me six months off, I'll be on a sabbatical, I'll try this out, if it doesn't work out, I'll come back. And, uh, and interestingly enough, the feedback that I got, which was very valid feedback, was saying that, Madan, if I give you that lifeline, you'll always come back. You'll be here, not in six, but in three months, saying, didn't work out, I want my job back. It doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for me. Right? And I think that was extremely valid that you, when you jump, you got to do it and cut off all safety lines. There's no, there's no, no other lifeline uh, for you because you, then that desperation will make you, uh, uh, you know, somehow managed to swim. Uh, the, the next part of, uh, of the jump piece, which is what we started once we just did it, was saying that we need to get one user. We need to get one customer. And that became our mantra. We said, forget about raising money, forget about doing anything else. Here we have an idea. We have to find a paying customer to validate it in whatever form. 
and we found our first customer in the form of Wipro who was willing to uh, play with us and we did one of the first large drives for Wipro. So it is when you do jump, either you just do it or you do it on back of a customer that you already have or a customer who's expressed interest to say if you guys come out with this kind of a solution or a product as a service, I'm going to uh, try this out. The, 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 the individual part uh, is the money part. One of the things that I was comfortable with is that I had a couple of lakhs in the bank and I was able to bring down my monthly expenses, my personal expenses. I was staying with my parents, I sold off my car, I had a two-wheeler. I knew I could survive on 5,000 rupees a month. So it was comforting that, hey, that two lakhs in the month I can survive for, the two lakhs in the bank I can survive for, for the next 12 months, worst case. Right, without any income, and that is a comforting fact. So, to a lot of entrepreneurs, I share feedback saying that you know what, guys, uh, make sure that you have enough of savings in the bank because you don't want to be looking into your bank account every day saying money is going to run out. What am I going to do? Because again, if you're trying to build a business, success doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, and you need to be able to survive uh, that period. It could either be your own money or some angel who's saying, you know funding you this much, go ahead and do it, and I'm covering you up for any of the costs that you incur. And lastly is partners. Uh, many times I wonder what I would have done without, uh, uh, you know, Murli or Mohan. I don't think I would have ever done uh, uh, track the way that it panned out without having a, a core set of partners, a core set of employees, and a core set of the ecosystem that I talked about. We built advisory boards, so on and so forth. So again, uh, one of the points to be considered when you're jumping is, who else do you take down with you? And not in that sense, but saying, who else do you take? Who else is there to support you? Because a support system is extremely critical uh, when you're embarking on your uh, journey. So find out in your line of business who are those uh, uh, who are those people who can give you beyond money, uh, who can lend their name, bring you credibility, and, and therefore you don't feel alone uh, when you're doing this. Uh, and, and, and for us, the advisory board was such a help in the first one and a half years because nobody knew Meritrack, obviously it was new, nobody knew Madan Murli or Mohan uh, because we didn't have any networks in the industry, but we had a bunch of advisors that almost everybody knew. And uh, the, the only question that we used to ask people when, you, when they used to ask who's with Meritrack, what are you guys? We used to put out a list of uh, the names of the five advisors we had with their mobile numbers and, uh, and email IDs and say, you know, guys, uh, do you know any one of these guys? And typically they would say, yeah, I know him and him or whatever. And we used to say, because they know us. But that was the end of the conversation. There was no questions about our credibility anymore. And that was very critical. Uh, in the next, uh, that, that's, this is the core of what I wanted to cover. In the next uh, uh, couple of slides, I just want to uh, uh, share two more thoughts uh, with you, two more words with you, and I'll open it up for, uh, for uh, questions. Uh, obviously, once you jump, you need to swim. So the four uh, uh, thoughts I have for swim are take small steps. You know, it is very important to validate the idea in whatever small steps you can show that your idea is working is very critical. So it could be a customer who might, so you have a plethora of, you have a range of offerings, one through nine, but if a customer wants to use two, five, seven, I'm just giving an example, go for it because you are proving something rather than saying, hey, this is my entire suite and this is what I just want to do. Try and prove the core of what you do through small steps that you can take. Win confidence, it is extremely important for your first five customers to be absolutely in love with you. And that's what helped us. The first five customers we had, uh, we struggled hard to make sure that we delivered to their, to their delight. And we found a reference base that helped us get our next 50 customers, quite literally. In fact, uh, if I were to track back the first five customers that we worked with and how that, those five helped us get the next 50 customers, I can always find the link. At winning confidence of of, of your customers, of your employees itself, and of everybody else in your ecosystem is supremely critical in the first one year. Invest wisely. Your time as an entrepreneur is the most critical asset that you have because there's no other money that exists uh, till you've done your round of fundraising. And you need to be 
very clear about where you're going to invest your time, money, and effort. In. Uh, it is a it is a very judicious call you need to make about who are the people that I need to be spending time with and what do I need to do because a day gone is a day gone and and you're one day as a famous Pink Floyd song goes one day closer to death uh, so that is a very critical angle to consider and lastly you just got to manage the madness uh, is sometimes uh, people say you know what the first two years almost everything that could go wrong for us went wrong and how did you survive and I say maybe we were mad enough not to recognize the madness that was going around, or maybe we were just enjoying the madness of, of things all around us. It is going to be madness, and you've got to be prepared to take that madness uh, with a large, big smile uh, every day, and, and you'll swim swim by enough. Uh, and, and obviously, the last word that I want to leave you with is how do you win, uh, is talked about it, wow, every customer that you can lay your hands on. Clearly, being an entrepreneur, people say is a very lonely uh, thing, but, but I'm saying, I'll say the opposite of saying that you will be a successful entrepreneur if you carry a lot of people along with you. It could be your employees, investors, customers that you have to carry all along with you, and therefore you're not alone. The winning is not I, but it's we, and, and that's very critical. And, and, and lastly, never, ever, ever give up. Uh, we were 15 days away from shutting down Meritrack because we ran out of money. Uh, and uh, I found a wonderful uh, poster on the roadside in MG Road, which we brought it back to office and put it up. And that said that, you know, people who give up uh, uh, did not know how close they were to success when they gave up. That became a rallying cry for us, saying that, you know what, maybe we're very close. Maybe if we hang on there for the next six months and do the stuff that we're doing, we will succeed. And in a way, that's what happened. Uh, we managed to find some money uh, by by cutting down salaries of everybody. We managed to get some savings back into the business and, and uh, survived six months afterwards. There's no looking back for us. Uh, end of the day, uh, folks, it's uh, your passion that makes it happen, nothing else. And your passion translates into everything you do, right? From luck to to uh, the idea that you that you dream upon to jumping, swimming, and winning. Uh, so I've tried to crunch a lot of thoughts in the last 25 minutes. I'll be happy to take questions for the next 10-15 uh, minutes. Uh, you can type in your questions. I have a panel where I can uh, read uh, what's coming up and uh, uh, I'll read out the question. Thank you very much, Madan. That was a very interesting session. And I'm sure people who would want to ask questions can send in the questions to us and we will forward them to you. And thank you to all our attendees. Yes, and actually the questions did come, came, did, you know, they were coming and we couldn't answer all. So you can all write to us at eclub at nenglobal.org. Also, if you found the session interesting, feel free to blog or post about it. The recorded version of the webinar will be available on our website, eclub.nenonline.org by the end of this week. Our next webinar will be held on July 18th from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. by Neeraj Shah of BNI on five shocking mistakes of the worst networkers. We look forward to your participation. Also, NEN eClub is starting a series of workshops across India. The first workshop is on July 14th at New Delhi on the topic Pivoting Your Venture and Getting to Plan B. The format of the workshop includes group work, exercises, and interaction with our guest entrepreneur to avail real-time perspective. Register today and get early word discounts. For more information, visit our website. Thank you once again and have a nice evening. Thank you.